Welcome to Mexico. This is a uh, this is vacation, Harris. At least that's what I thought. This is is kind of a vibe. I'm considering keeping this. What do you think? Anyway, I'm supposed to be on vacation, but I just felt the urge to make another video. So I woke up at 7 a.m. It's the only time they're not blasting music out here. So it's the only time I have to shoot. I just can't walk away from you guys. You're like, you're like my Hurt Locker. The last time I took a camera with me on vacation was when we went to Japan in 2019. Well, just because that was the last time I actually <laughs> I took a vacation. But I shot that video in 1080p on my Canon EOS R. I'm shooting this video in 8K. <laughs> That's insane. Like, it's crazy to me how much cameras have improved over the last couple of years and how much more affordable these professional tools have gotten. Like, you can go out and you can get a 4K mirrorless camera for a super budget price so that you can start learning this stuff. So, for all of you who have just gotten your first camera or maybe are considering getting your first camera and want to just understand the basics first, look at you being prepared. Good for you. I have a list of five settings, just five, that if you can get the basic hang of, just the gist of it, your footage will look 10 times better. But let's make this video as quick as we can because if Kenzie wakes up and finds out that I'm working, she's not, she's not gonna be super happy. <laughs> let's go. But hey, speaking of working on the internet, let's talk about today's sponsor, Dashlane. Did you know that Dashlane secures all your passwords, payments, and personal information in a secure place that only you can access? and then it auto fills that data for you on every site in just a click. Dashlane is powered by patented security technology and machine learning, which is why it consistently ranks as the top password manager available. No matter the device or browser you're using, it makes every shopping experience a one-click checkout, stores your passwords so you're never locked out of an account, and provides VPN for streaming content and secure browsing. So look, give it a try for free. On your first device, go to dashlane.com slash alpha50, and then use promo code alpha50. That way you'll get 50% off if you ever decide to upgrade to one of their paid plans. Back to the video. Hey, and by the way, guys, if you have any thoughts or comments throughout this video, maybe something I missed, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and hit the like button while you're down there because it helps out a ton. Thanks, let's jump into it. Let's start off by banging out three right off the bat. These are probably three settings that you've heard of. These are the three main settings you're gonna be adjusting on the fly. These three are usually right across the bottom of your camera screen. In fact, let's just, let's just do this. There we go. Now you can see shutter speed here, aperture here, and ISO here. All three of these, don't worry about this one, this one's just exposure. All three of these adjust the exposure or like the brightness of your footage, but all three of these also adjust one other thing. This one, let's start with shutter speed. Your shutter speed is how long the shutter is open for each image, so how long it lets in light. It's shown on most cameras as one over a number, like you can see right now, mine is set to one over 60 because my shutter speed is 1 60th of a second. If I were taking a picture and I wanted to slow this down and leave it open for 30 times longer, maybe one half of a second, I would let in a ton more light, but my shutter would be open more for more movement and you get a ton more motion blur. By the way, that's how you get those really cool long exposure shots. You leave the shutter open for like 15 seconds and you move around in a dark area with like a really bright light and then it records the entire movement of that light. The general rule for shutter speed, in order to get a very natural motion blur in your video, is you want your shutter speed to be half of your frame rate. Meaning, I'm shooting in 30 frames per second. So every frame is a 30th of a second. Does that make sense? My shutter speed is 1 60th of a second. I want the shutter speed open for only half of a frame. So if I'm shooting in 60 frames per second, I'm gonna want my shutter speed to be 1 over 120. Usually cameras don't do 1 over 120, they do 1 over 125. It's close enough, you get it as close as you can. You get on shutter speed? All right, let's jump to the next one. The aperture or f-stop. The aperture is like the iris of your lens, similar to the iris of your eye. You know how when you go out into super bright light and your iris kind of closes up so your pupil gets really, really small? So that way you let in less light and you don't go blind. Well, your camera can do the same thing. It's that number next to the F on your screen and the lower that number is, the wider open the iris is, so the more light you're gonna let in on your camera. But also, as it opens up, that's what gives you a blurrier background or a shallow depth of field. Let me just show you. As I close up the iris, look at the background, look over here. Look how much more in focus it gets. And I go back all the way down to 1.8 and I got blurry it gets. Let's try that again. There we go, all the way down to F13. You can probably see the faces on these people down behind me. I'll open it all the way back up to F1.8. 
can't see anything behind me anymore. Different lenses have a different maximum aperture, I guess, I don't know, minimum aperture. The look, because the lower the number, the better. But they'll always let you know what that lowest number is. Like a lot of more affordable lenses will give you like an F4 as the lowest, and you get to more premium stuff, but go all the way down to an F2.8. Or like this lens right here is actually an F1.8. That's how I'm able to get such a, a blurry background behind me. But let's jump into the last number. There we go. This one right here, this one is ISO. This one is the digital brightness of the shot. So it's basically like going in the Photos app on your phone and cranking up the brightness. It's a very similar idea. You can, if you have a really dark shot, you can go in and crank up the ISO, but if you crank it up too much, you're gonna end up getting that, that, that noise, that grain in your shot. So you are better off getting as much natural light in there first and then just compensating what you need left with the ISO. Different cameras can handle higher ISOs without adding in a ton of noise, but as a general rule of thumb, especially if you're on a beginner camera, I try not to let the ISO get too far above 2000, maybe 3200. And now you have your three exposure settings. And once you combine all three of those, you have this here, which is your exposure, which lets you know how close you are to properly exposing your camera. It should be at zero. I have mine set to one because I'm pretty sure this brightness behind me is kind of throwing off the number. If I were to bring this down to zero, where it's supposed to be, my face would be too dark. So we're gonna leave it at plus one. Let's talk about the last two settings where things start to get fun. Let's talk about focal length. The focal length is basically the zoom of the camera, right? But if you're new to cameras, I bet you didn't know that the zoom has a little secret. Did you know that the more zoomed in your lens is, the more blurry your background gets? It's true, I'll show you. This is a zoom lens. This is a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. That is the focal length. This is 24 and 70. Let me swap out this lens real quick. So here we're at 24 millimeter and we still have a little bit of a blurry background behind me, right? Because this lens is nice and it goes down to F 2.8. But if I were to zoom all the way in to 70 millimeter, take a look at the tree behind me here. Look how blurry that tree got. Let me bring it back. Do you see how dramatic that was? So it's the balance of the focal length or the zoom of your lens and the aperture of your lens that decide how blurry the background of your shot is. Very last one, and I'm gonna combine two here just for fun. Let's talk about resolution and frame rate and what you need to know. I feel like I'm not getting enough light on my face. There we go. That's nicer. So we shoot all of our stuff in 8K, even though we only upload to YouTube in 4K. The reason we shoot in 8K is because it gives us flexibility. It allows us to zoom and punch in if we ever want to without losing any resolution. Or if maybe my camera is crooked and Scott needs to adjust it in post, he can do that and it's still gonna be completely in 4K. We can go up to 200% zoom in, do a 200% zoom in here. It's still gonna be 4K. If I shot this whole video in 4K and did a 200% zoom in, this portion of the video would only be 1080p. And when it comes to frame rate, this is how we get slow-mo shots or smooth some B-roll stuff out because we upload all of our stuff in 30 frames per second. That's what we work in. But if I wanted to get a slowed down, really smooth shot, I would shoot it in 60 frames per second and then I would slow it down to half speed. I actually shoot any and all B-roll in 4K 60 just in case I wanna slow it down. I have the flexibility to do that. This camera actually shoots in 4K 120 frames per second which is bonkers, by the way. Or if I really want to, it can do 1080p at 240 frames per second if I want to slow it down to an eighth of the speed. I had Kenzie shoot a video of me tossing Lennon in the air earlier at 240 frames a second. How'd that, how'd that look? How'd that turn out? I have no idea. I haven't seen it yet. So anyway, if you can get a basic understanding of these five core concepts, you're going to kind of skip like the first year of me trying to figure out cameras. Because when I started, there were no... YouTube tutorials like this, so that hurts me a little bit. Anyway, should I do like a mic basics like this also? Like the basic settings of the microphone, how they work and what you need to know? Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that and hit the like button while you're down there because it's free and you're still watching the video. So you obviously liked it. If you don't have any specific comment, go ahead and just leave your favorite emoji because that's engagement and it helps the video a ton. And as always, happy streaming.